Welcome to Sacred Sessions, light-filled, uplifting and informative conversations for people on their spiritual path. Join me, Melissa Matthews, and me, Alison Filler here, each week as we openly share our personal experiences and wisdom on life, love and spirituality in the modern world. Hi, I'm Melissa Matthews and I'm here today with Alison and we're going to be talking about intuition. Everyone's got it. It's like a muscle. It's one of Alison's biggest things, you know, it's like a muscle. It's my Everyone's biggest got muscle. It. <laughs> <laughs> we've already talked about our own spiritual path we've talked about abundance and appreciating what you already have because this is part of it it's like a complete package what we're talking about and then you've got boundaries you know knowing what's right for you and you know better decision making and looking after yourself and this ties into intuition and the senses you know we're going to talk about like how you might experience it what are the common names that are used for these um, abilities? You know, six senses, you know, intuition, clear abilities. So how you might experience it and what we've learnt. So take it away, Alison, because I've done oh. the intro. <laughs> <laughs> With pleasure. Um, so many, many people kind of are intrigued by when they start off developing their intuition What's it going to look like? What's it going to feel like? What am I going to hear and um, see? And I think when I was first trying to open my third eye and, you know, <laughs> is it open? You know, is my third eye open? Someone else is open anything. more. <laughs> <laughs> like competition. Oh, I know. It's like, please, someone open my third eye. <laughs> that person's floating past on a cloud. You know, like I'm not there yet. I've got so much to learn, so little time. So. <laughs> and that's the thing. You have these kind of preconceived ideas of what, um, you, you know, opening to intuition, you know, is supposed to look like. I thought I was supposed to actually see, like, full on, you know. Um, Buster movies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, angels or guides or even, like, loved ones deceased loved ones and stuff like that and to be honest my clairvoyance so there's you know different ways of receiving this information and being able to see clear images or seeing images in your imagination or your third eye was the last one to develop for me for me it was clairsentience and clair audience and then clear cognizance that all down that all kind of developed for me first that I could in like for me it was just becoming aware of a subtle energy around me and then as that energy blended with me I could pick up emotions and feelings and I could feel was this a male was it a female I could feel my way through everything everything came through by feeling for me and then slowly, bit by bit, it's like this, this, um, this information was like dropped into my head. So it was kind of a combination of receiving just this download of knowledge, this download of what this person was saying. It's all blended together in a feeling, hearing, sensing kind of way for me. And it's, it's putting all those pieces of the puzzle together. But one of the biggest things that I kind of wanted to, was really important is that you're not doing anything. It's really important to realize that you're just the receiver and that, that this energy, these guys, these spirit, the spirit realm are actually blending with you. And it's, took me a long time to really practice that because getting into the receptive mode is not our first kind of ease so just allowing and receiving and letting them put the right information in there was just how it all came together so how about you Melissa yeah just following on from that when you're saying you know that the information it comes through and you are the like this. It's my experience too. You know, it's much easier uh, when you're more relaxed about it. And you, so it's it's just like having this conversation that we're having having now. 
That's, mm. that's what my readings are like. And the information just comes through. That's because of this, um, this blending or, um, you know, it's just, it allows, a, to me, the information just comes through and, and I bring it out. So that's like a channeling or whatever you want to call it. There's different ways. But it's really important to understand that it is not a competition. And if something's not coming through, if an answer to their question is not coming through, just wait because you might need to talk a little bit more and then that information might come through in a different way after they've had that realization. So that's what I find as a reader. So with regards to um, my abilities, they were always there, but where I got confused, I mean, and since I was a child, you know, I was told that I had a very vivid imagination. I would hear music and songs and I would feel, you know, at night, like, you know, laying there and you sort of feel this sort of stroking of the music, holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know? And so some things were, you know, a little bit whatever. Um, and I would hear, you know, obviously the hearing, clear cognizance, that clear knowing. I knew a lot. Like I knew a lot. And I knew things that I couldn't possibly have known. Um, uh, you know, and also like concepts. So even as, a, even as a very young person, there were things that I would just know. And I would know how to find things really easily. So I was a great um, advocate or researcher, if you like. Um, and I always seem to come into contact, you know, with, with the right people at the right time for whatever was needed. Um, even to the point of um, there's Claire Gustance, which is taste, and Claire Alliance, which is smell. So sometimes these are really important things, you know, to come through in a reading, particularly, um, or, you know, using any intuition, if you're looking to connect, you know, it, you might suddenly smell, you know, uh, a particular um scent so say you know old auntie rosie you know wore rose because you know and that's why she was known that way so you so i might get that this smell of these beautiful roses coming in or it might even be a flower or something but you know it may be one of those um you know a beautiful you know from an old garden you know like the the gardens of 40 years ago you know where you had those beautiful scents come through and then relaying that to the person and saying, you know, this is what's coming through. And they say, that is definitely um, old Annie Rosie. And, um, and she, you know, and so they confirm it that way. So you know, this beautiful garden. So we've used Claire, uh, Claire Voyance because I've seen the garden, the, the smell, you know, which is Claire Allianz, we've used that. Claire Voyance because I've seen a very quick image of her in the garden and she might've been, you know, digging and things like that as well. And I've seen the outline of her and I've heard her particularly laugh, say, so that would cover it all. It can happen in any combination, but it's important to understand that these things might be quite, they might be really quick. They might come through really quick. And it's when you yeah. start to trust them and know them when, you know, that you, that you realize, you know what, this is, this is valid information coming through. This person recognizes that these are these abilities and I have them in whatever strength is needed at this time on this day for this person. Yeah, and that's all there is to it. So, and I, um, even when you were talking about, you know, like seeing angels and things like that, I, you know, I see them in so many different ways. But there's that, that knowing, and that, and I can actually feel their energy as well. So it will feel yeah. really high, and it will just feel really soft and lovely. And you know, it, but their personality will also come through. So there's different ways that I find, but my confidence when, um, so when I. Uh, you know, when I started on my path, I started reading books and I'm like, <laughs> reading books, I'm thinking, that's not what I'm thinking about clairvoyance. Like, um, and so I would try to do it that way. And I was just flunking. Like, I was so trying so hard that I wasn't relaxed. And so for me, the consistency is that I have to be relaxed. I have to be happy. It has to just like flow out of me. And that's all there is to it. Yeah. So yeah. when it's not consistent is when I'm stressed, when I'm overtired. And sometimes, quite frankly, when I don't need to work you know, yeah. when I need to take a break and that's okay yeah. too. So I don't worry about it. I don't freak out that my, my abilities have gone. I just think, you know what, it's time to take a break. That's a good signal for me. And sometimes yeah. I'll do that as well so that I know that, you know, what, I'm going to have a week off and it's okay. What yeah. about you? Uh, well, I think what I've realised is because I, you know, years ago I wanted to be able to see things I wanted to be able to actually see things but what I've realized is that it hasn't it wasn't the best way for me to receive information because to be honest if anything 
bad happened, like, I don't like to see it. Like, I, <laughs> I'm quite, I'm the type of person that if you, I don't like to see negativity. I like, don't like to see, like, if there's an accident or blood or, you know, I'm like, oh my God, just, I just can't see it. And yeah. so that's okay. I have learned that that's okay. And that um, the more I've relaxed into that and to ask them to clear my, you know, um, my fears around that. And for me, it's been a lot of past life stuff as well. So something that's been really interesting over my spiritual awakening and development is is receiving past life messages. And they've just come out of the blue at the most random times that when um, over the last years, I remember one of my first experiences of seeing and feeling receiving messages. I was lying, I was receiving a, a healing from someone. I think I was getting some a Reiki or something like that. And my intention was just to relax, but I think I was they, you know, they said to me, set an intention for this Reiki treatment. And I think it was something around clearing my money blocks or something. So I was lying there on the table, just relaxing. And then all of a sudden out of the blue, I started to feel myself or imagine feeling myself being dragged along this rocky road, this really stone rocky path by my feet. I could feel myself being dragged along. And as I like asked just what is all this about, all this extra information started to come through that it, it was me being back in slavery time in like, you know, around, you know, Christ time, back in Jerusalem, those kind of times where I was powerless and I was just, being dragged along as a slave and things like that. And it was so incredible to me to start to like, I was like, wow, I just had the most vivid, <laughs> vivid, um, you know, I was conscious around it. But it, it's over the years, these things have just started to show up more and more and more because my guides are helping, helping me clear my money blocks or whatever issue intention I had. It's because I've got these past life, um, attachment still to these things so it's just come through it's just happened in the most random times when I haven't even expected these things to vision also have you, you know many have you ever been in the shower where you're just having a shower and then all of a sudden you kind of get this downloaded information it's just or standing there washing up or you know early in the morning washing up or doing the dishes and just all of a sudden I just you have this download of stuff coming through yeah just this feeling or maybe um i know for me i would i'll just quickly tell you this i remember standing at the sink so definitely like in the shower because you know, i'm pretty relaxed and but i remember standing at the sink and um uh so someone that i had really loved had, had passed over and um every now and again you know i'd think about him and uh and anyway, and I'm standing at the sink and I got this sort of thing that he, I felt like this presence behind me and I kind of heard like this sort of maybe like a laugh or something. And what I was doing was um, I was doing something with the eggs, right? Because I'm pretty funny about the eggs that I eat, where they come from and <laughs> things like that, you know, they buy dynamic eggs and that. And anyway, so there was a bit of a, a joke about that. And when I went to see a medium a couple of months later, she said, oh, she said, and what is it with the eggs? Because she was, <laughs> she was bringing it through. So, you know, these are other things, like these are these quiet moments, but definitely, you know, definitely at the sink, um, you know, because no one wants to talk to you around the sink. So maybe that's a quiet, you know, like the family, like you're doing your work, maybe, I don't know. But, you know, it's a beach too. That's where I go to connect and waterfalls and things like that. I Absolutely. Love nature. It's like the time that I have with, with, you know, who I call my peeps, my guides. And that's the time when we connect or, you know, I might get some information and things like that as well or some concepts, you know. And, you know, and then two days later, someone will come to see me or I'll be talking with someone and that was that information that had come through and now it's to be given to them to help them. And that's a great thing, you know. So, yeah, definitely. Water and nature is such great conductor of um you know for spirit to come through and to connect to us 
And I think that's so important as well is that if you can imagine, you know, running around every day, your busy, busy, busy life, and you have your guides out there trying to get information down to you and you're never sitting still to receive it. It's like they're trying to like, you know, get your attention, but you're never sitting still. It's those times when I was lying on the massage table or just taking a shower or just, you know, it, that's when the mess, it's like, oh, yeah, quick. There's, she's still, let's try and <laughs> <laughs> let's jump in now. Let's it's like at now. night, I have this thing. I'm like, let's. Um... So if I have been really busy, you know, because I do other things as well, like I go away for um, transport logistics, so I'll go away for a week at a time. That's always like a high energy time because they've really got me there. Even though I'm on site doing things, there's a lot of information that will come through during that time. And it's a, it's a good time for me to spend time with them. But, but you know, like they'll, um, so my guides will come through with information and, and what they'll do is, oh, do you know that bit where you're lying just in the early hours of the morning and you're lying there and it's very, very nice and calm and it's just enough that you're not asleep but you're not completely awake. Maybe you haven't opened your eyes yet and you're still really drifting. That's where they'll bring in some information or even like a beautiful song. Like, And these are modern songs. It's not all like, you know, <laughs> there's, not, there's no aversion to rock Hops and roll and things like yeah. that. No, it's not always like that. But but you know, this is also when the information will come through too. And it might just be, it might just be a reminder about something that I promised to do. That's mm. a really thing as well, because my guides, you know, they they've asked me to give them say an hour a day, and that's an hour outside of meditation so that they can bring through information. And my guides are guides, they are angels and archangels. So, you know, there, there seems to be no limit, but they are all beautiful and they all work with me. And, and so there's a process that I go through to discern who's meant to be there. But essentially, like, you know, I'm very clear in my uh, understanding of the communications. And I know that if they if they wake me up in the night, it's because I haven't done something. So they're reminding me, you promised. Mm, you how good, promised. How good is that? <laughs> how good is that? Even like when you're about to leave the house or you go to the shops or, you, you know, sometimes they'll just drop that, don't forget the toilet paper or don't right. forget <laughs> yeah, this. They will. It's like, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> good. And, yeah. So it's very interesting. And, and I've always been known as a person like, so if we go away together or if I go, say if I'm doing an event or anything like that, and this is maybe not my event, but I'm just going along or maybe I'm doing some sort of management within it. It's always like, oh, you go and see Melissa. She'll have it. So, you know, gaffer tape, anyone, cable ties, <laughs> Panadol, the medical kit, um, you know, a spare phone, you know, so that they can, so there are all these things that, but I just know to take those things. And so I could, easily you know fall into the trap of being uh you know an over-organized person and things like that and sometimes people really find that very hard to understand they um mm -hmm. see it as very masculine but in fact that organization that that knowing and that listening to you know uh don't forget to take this you know that real like inner voice in your head well there's there could be a reason why it's needed and maybe it's just part of like you know taking a kid or whatever but i take it and invariably someone does need it. So I have been seen as a, I don't know, over, over preparer, over analytical or whatever, but you know, I do understand that, that, um, that that's part of my personality and I've learned to really love that. I've re learned to really love that because for me, that's about intuition as well. And so I love process and procedures, but I love that practical things. And that is also a way for me to be of service. If somebody needs a Panadol, if somebody needs a phone, if somebody needs somewhere quiet to sit, you know, I'm the person that, you know, can do that for them. And that's not only as, um, you know, as a reader and as a clairvoyant, that's also um, as a logistics manager, you know, yeah. I'm the person that will make it happen. And nobody over there knows about my, <laughs> my career over here. I do keep them separate. Well, it just goes to show how much, you know, intuition and using your sixth sense is in every facet of your life. And yeah. I've always thought the sixth sense is the first sense. Like we are born with our intuition way before we can actually see, hear, you know, feel or any of those other senses. Even in our mother's wombs, we're, you know, picking up and intuiting 
so much information. Like if you've ever done any healings or sessions on, I know, um, you know, going back into the womb, I clear stuff from people with my kinesiology sessions all the time where stress comes from, patterns come from, and it comes from back way back in the womb where you're picking up on your mother or father's stress or anxiety or situations around you. So, um, it does yeah. stay in the body. It's an energy and it stays in the body. And sometimes we, we don't know what it is. Sometimes it, it can't be picked what it is. I've, I've had people come here and, and, and my guides will say to me, this is what it's about. And I'll ask, I'll say, does this person need to know? And they say, no, but we want you to understand it so that you can see. And, you know, and it might be about, you know, um, that, they, you know, that when, we, when their parents, you know, found out that they were expecting a child, it was either quite overjoyed or it was overshadowed maybe by a previous miscarriage. And so there's this, still this sense of there's just something there that can't be picked. Absolutely. And so, and so that's what the, you know, the guides say to me, you know, there's this sense of connection and sense of belonging. And so this is what it's about. So they don't need to know about it. And, but, you know, you can just say to them, look, you might think about things a bit differently. There might be some, something that you no longer think about and suddenly you'll realize, gosh, that feeling's gone from me now. And it could have been like a sense of longing, a sense of um, disconnection, a sense of sadness even. Yeah. Uh, you know, and these are these may not seem like big things to some people, but for others, this is like part of them. This 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 thing that was just there, and now, you know, it's been. Um, you know, they they do what they need to do, the angels and guides, and they do that to to help that person come along, and that's where that person is on that spiritual path. Because, you know, even though I'm uh, labelled as a healer, what I do is I provide the space for. Or that person and I and I tell them what's going on and and you know and pass those messages through as, as well as you know those readings but it's not about me I don't interfere as a human unless I'm asked specifically to do something and so you can see why that um, why that is so important you know and that is you know that that feeling that clear sentience that you talk about and that clear knowing something is not right but I don't know what it is yeah and you've helped me to understand that because you know a lot of stuff that, that's around, I'm just like, okay. <laughs> but you help me to understand that it's most basic, you know. So I do appreciate that. Mm. Aw, thanks, Mel. Oh, you're pretty special. <laughs> so I just love that when you talk about, you know, that word healer. And I, I you know, I just don't, I see myself as just helping facilitate that healing, which is, is what you, you do as well. And we're just the channel, um, the channel of just bringing through the information or holding the space or just allowing our client to receive the information that they may have been, you know, searching to, fi to, to find because it's so deeply unconscious. and um it's amazing what can finally shift and change when you connect to that missing piece and it just kind of really unlocks the mystery for people and just bring in that that healing from something from you know when they're little tiny children it's it's just beautiful to watch when that all comes together those pieces of the puzzle don't you think I think so. I think so. I remember um, talking to someone um, and I was just saying, you know, to be able to do this work is really beautiful. And I said, it just brings me pure pleasure and joy. And she accused me of being, uh, you know, the ego and things like that. But it wasn't about that. What I was trying to articulate to her, and I don't think she truly understood, was it, it's this beautiful feeling that comes through even when I'm working. And that's why I don't, I just absolutely love working with people simply because it doesn't tie me. It's beautiful. This, this energy and this um, that comes through during that time, you know, it's also coming for me as well. And it is the most serene feeling and beautiful feeling. And I just go with whatever is brought through. Um, and, you know, sometimes something, a particular, um, so say like a past life, 
-hmm. maybe you won't have any of those come up for anyone and I just think well you know are they true are they real because you know me I'm a bit of a skeptic about things and then yeah and it does come up either for them or for me but it's an interesting you know it's it's really it's really wonderful actually just to be able to do these things but it is actually just knowing like what my abilities are and trusting them and the same as you you've had that as well oh well that's the thing never in a million years would i think that i would be doing this kind of work and like i've talked about before it's just being trained all the time by you know spirit on you know i never would have thought that i would actually start to be able to you know see and receive my past lives you know it's just they're doing that for me and i've just been the willing you know learner and student and now they can they show me my clients past lives if it's relevant to healing what it is that they've needed to heal and you know release that from their cellular memory of you know slavery or poverty or being you know abused or you know, anything like that, that they're trying to break free from here in the present can be so tied up to, you know, cellular memory stuff. Yeah. So it's just that's, incredible. That's why I see, you know, self-awareness, you know, personal development to me is spiritual development. And because it, it brings you to an understanding of yourself and what is right for you. And, you. and generally you can't be swayed, you know, unless you're tired. So that's why to me intuition is really important because that's your, your inner sense, your inner being. And if there's something there that's not sitting right, you know, it's not sitting right and that's all there is to it. And you can be talked out of it and things like that as well. And sometimes it's actually safer to go along with that because, you know, like, let's be honest, you know, I've been in some tricky relationships, you know, as a younger person and, you know, I knew that it was just safer just to, I knew, I knew, like I knew that things weren't right and I knew that they were being dishonest or deceitful, but I knew that it was, for me, I also knew that it was safer for me just to agree with them. So, you know, I want to also bring that in as well, because, you know, we must trust ourselves that, you know what, sometimes it, we can see it and we don't do anything about it. Or you see someone and you think, why are they in that situation? They're not doing anything about it because you know what, they know what they need to do to be safe. That is intuition as well. Yeah. And that is really strong. So, yeah, um, you know, um, and so their internal guidance is actually working really well for them. But yeah, I see, um, yeah, it was, it was really funny because for so many, like, or oh, so many months there, I just thought, oh, I'm crap at this because I, I just was <laughs> studying all these books and I just thought, I used to be so good at this. What happened? <laughs> and then I started to relax and I started to take that time out and I started to listen and whatever came through, whether it was, um, you know, things like past lives or if I could see like maybe within their chakra system, which is the energetic system or whatever it was, I just went with it. And I just thought, you know what, this is great because I'm actually now, you know, I'm working with spirit mm. and this is what they want me to do to bring that Absolutely. in. And that's it. Yeah. So, so has there ever been any time where you've doubted it? Like since you've, yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, I mean, I doubt myself. I don't doubt spirit. I think that's the thing. Like I've, you know, it's taken a long time for me to stop doubting myself and letting go of control. And that's just been such a beautiful thing to know that I just say to spirit every day, show me where I need to go, show me what I need to do. And I just, if there's people out there that, you know, need any help or anything that I could offer, please just bring them to me. And that's, it's just incredible then that all, so all the clients that I receive that just show up have just been so spot on and perfect and ready. And it just, just makes it so beautiful that I don't have to control this or that there's a power greater than me. There's people, you know, that are just wanting us to just be of service and takes all the ego out of it. Well, I try to. <laughs> Aren't you perfect like me, Alison? Oh, but it's literally blown my mind. Like 
It's just incredible. I've had, I've got, I'm, you know, writing a book and I've got so, I've so many things that I could share of the most amazing things that have shown up, that have turned up. You know, I get, sometimes I get spirits around me while I'm not at work and I just say, all right, I don't know who you are, but if you need some help or a loved one, you have to get your loved one to book in within 24 hours, they're booking in and it's like, just blows my mind. It's incredible. And I'll say to this client, this client doesn't even know really why they're coming to me. They don't know that they're going to be getting a message. They just got, you know, they saw me on Facebook or someone referred them to me. And I'm sure this is what happens to you as well. And it's like, Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so you're connected to this person that I've been feeling around me and stuff like that. <laughs> it's like, how does this even happen? So, um, yeah. Well, I decided, um, so at this retreat last weekend, it was it was really good. It was just what I needed. And um, and anyway, and at this retreat, so before, before, it, before it happened, um, there was a, you know, an email to say, you know, this is this is what we're doing. This is when you're expected to be here. If anyone feels that they would like to have a reading, then you know, let me know, and I'll and I'll book it in. So I thought I'm going to do that because you know sometimes I'll go and get a reading because I actually want to know. Like it's almost like for me, like okay, is this going along how I'm imagining it, like or seeing it or ex, you know experiencing? It? Because you know mm-hmm. sometimes I actually can't believe my luck. Alison, I'll be honest with you. And because I can see into the future uh, for myself, you know, and if it's needed, obviously for others, but there are certain things that I do see into the future. There's a reason that I can see them, but you know, that's like, but it's not about that, but I do like to go along. And I also, uh, I, I'm quite used to the energy of these particular beings around me, like archangels and things like that as well. And sometimes, you know, people can be a bit overwhelmed by that, but so what I'm trying to say is that I'm so used to it that I want someone else to tell me <laughs> who's there, right? And uh, and anyway, and so I had this reading and it was just, it was actually just everything that I knew that it would be. I could have saved my money and that sort of thing, but sometimes I actually just want to hear about that. And I also want to hear, you know, if there's something that I'm missing from my guides, there's something that they want me to work on, you know, then I want yeah. to hear that as well. So, yeah. you know, so there are reasons why I'll have readings and things like that as well. And I also know that within those readings, um, you know, that there is healing that goes on because you've turned up. So whether the the reader, you know, they may not realize that they are a healer, you know, naturally, you know, hold those frequencies. So, yeah, (laughs) but you know, that's just me. (laughs) Yes. It's, it's, um, it's look, it's just all, everyone's different. Everyone has to find their own way. It's, you know, it's really good to um, have mentors around you or have people that you look up to or who, who you can really resonate with. And, you know, sometimes there's only one or two people that you really feel in alignment to or can really look up to. And I know that that's been the way for me, especially when I feel like I'm being trained all the time constantly by my higher self and, you know, my spirit team. Um, It's been hard for me to like go to other humans. (laughs) It's true. It's true. I wish I could sometimes, you know, or have more humans um, mentors. Um, But it's been, I feel like, it's been my journey to be just trust that I'm being trained by my own, by spirit and my higher self. And that's all I've really needed, even though it's nice to like read books and hear other people's journeys. And that's just really beautiful because it can help you go, Oh yeah, you know, I am on the right track or this is happening to me as well. Mm. So, yeah, I, I'm, I got a bit confused and I got a bit swayed, you know, by, um, uh you know and I did that like I allowed that and so I do prefer to read books and I see and I I like to learn how other people are doing it I like to see that but you know like for me like working using my intuition and doing what I do 
one of the big things for me was, um, okay, so if I think about the words like that we um, as humans would use, because, you know, I do differentiate between how the, how the communication is. So the easiest words that I have for how I deliver and how I work is inform, inspire. What was the other one? <laughs> Empower. In, and I'm not, a, I'm not keen on empower, but what it means is that I inform. So I provide some sort of information to you, whether it's, you know, um, whether it's a, a quote or something like that, or whether you come to see. Um, inspire. So, you know, by my very um, presence or, um, you know, or you might have read something, that also, it inspires you. So you're not going to like follow me and do what it is. You're going to be thinking, you know what, I can do that too. Or, you know, I can take that into my life as well. And then that empowers you. So that gives you that sense of you, your sense of self. And this is really what it's about, you know, to actually have your sense of self. So yes, yes. I found that that was a big key for me was that I could be inspired by people, but I couldn't be held to a particular training or modality because for me, it was actually with my angels and guides. And there are fantastic modalities. There's fantastic ways of being. And I've met the most beautiful people and they all do different things. But again, they are actually about what is right for them. And it's wonderful to see. And they see that in others. And, and it's like, oh, well, I'm right and you're right. And so there's, no, right. there's no fight about it. There's no fight about spirit or anything like that. It's just, I see you. And, that's how, and it's so beautiful. So, yeah, so that... So all of these things that we've already talked about really do come down to the fact that it is actually all about you and how you experience it. And so you can be inspired and you can do your work and you can spend your time with meditation and personal development and spiritual development, but it is all about what feels right for you. Absolutely. That's for you. And then we spoke about uh, in the boundaries one, which is, I think was episode three, but how you can use phrase to get out of it too, if you need to. <laughs> I'll come back to you on that. So there you go. Just, just trusting and just working on that connection with you, with your inner voice, with your inner self, with your higher self. That's, that's just been, that's just the best thing that I can recommend. And, and to keep doing the inner work, to be a clear channel, to be able to, you know, you've got to be able to work on your own stuff heal your own stuff so then you can be non-attached and unattached or hold the space for other people without seeing things through your own filter, your own filter of negativity or pain or, or things like that. So, you know, it's because um, that can be tricky as well. Yeah, it can be. So oh, we nice. might wrap this up now, but it's been wonderful once again speaking with you. And thank you, everyone, who's joined us again today. Thank you. And um, you can find out more about us in the show notes. Um, and uh, you can find out how to work with us or if we're doing any events and things like that as well. But we thank you. Thank you. And bye, Alison. Bye, Melissa. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Sacred Sessions. Your comments, questions and topic suggestions are welcome. So connect with us on Facebook and Instagram and through our websites. Naturally, all links are in the show notes.